Okay, um, I'm going to show you how to arrive at a bevel angle to make uh, isosahedra. I gave an overview of this in another video, but just another brief overview is if I want to assemble an isosahedron like this, where the parts are actually beveled together, so this bevel here um, meets with its neighbor, the, the question is how do you know what that angle is? And I'm going to show you how to get that. And so we, we arrive at, we, we try to find, we try to build this angle and then cut it in half. That's what we do to get this. I'm going to show you that. Now here's another smaller example of it. <clears throat> if I just take five triangles, equilateral triangles, and put them together, uh, I do have, <clears throat> you know, one of the corners of, of an isosahedron. And then this angle here is cut in half to get this bevel angle, which is, you know, what you use to put these together. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, and I've done this many times. Uh, I have an old set of um, styrene triangles, which are kind of easy to cut. Looks like what I did was I just, you know, made a circle and circles within circles and got this um, set of triangles and put them together. Ooh, a little hair on it. And I taped them together. This is kind of old, so I'm gonna I'm gonna sort of do it over again, um, just to show you the whole process. So you start you start with um, five triangles. One, two, three, four, five. And the, the trick is to get them uh, as accurate as possible. So um, maybe in another video I'll show you how to draw and cut uh, triangles accurately. But the easiest and fastest way is perhaps to draw them in a um, vector program such as uh, Illustrator and uh, then have um, a laser cutter cut them. So these are cut by laser cutter. So it's, it's uh, quite accurate that way. And I'm just going to get some masking tape and tape them together. Um, maybe I'll start by pulling them together this way. Make sure they're nice and tight and then Put some tape this way. And then another one beside it. Try to line up the points very accurately. You know, this part has to be done quite accurately. The more accurate you are with this, um, the more accurate the final results will be. And, you know, I keep these things around for a while, but the tape lets go after a while. So every now and again, I do have to make another one. Or tape it, which is fine. But really, once you have the angle, uh, you don't need to do this again. But, you know, I like to redo it occasionally just to make sure. So, just together. I'm going to flip it over and just trim off this extra tape. And I've got some tape around the outside edges. I'm going to take that off just to make sure <clears throat> there's nothing interfering with how accurately it's sitting. Okay. Get that stuff off my fingers. Back. This, this, this tape acts as a kind of a nice hinge. It's it's fairly strong, um, and it's a nice. There's a nice way you can flip it like that to keep it flat to get the tape to work. Maybe I should have pushed these all down more firmly before I started. I didn't do that before. Like nice and tight at the uh, juncture. Okay, so now on a flat surface, they will line up. Okay, and that's exactly the way it works on a. Um, 
isosahedron. So now what I need to do, oh, I should have, okay, here, here's actually a square line that I've, I've done this before. So that square line tells me that I want to line this up or, you know, if, if we take a pencil and, and make a line from there across and from point to point, so to speak. Okay, that's the angle I want to record, and I'm going to use this adjustable bevel. It's just, you know, a sliding arm and a handle with a locking mechanism. And I want to put this on here. This isn't going to work. It's hitting the table there. That's, that's okay. So I have to hold it like that. And lock it in place, okay? Now I want to make sure I'm holding it in in this line. I'm going to show you another way of doing this in case you don't have an adjustable bevel, and you probably don't. I thought that might be helpful. Um, you know, these any kind of two straight edges uh, can be useful, and with these corners on these set squares, uh, these are just like little set squares that come in cheap bath sets. Uh, I can I can put these together like this. Can you see that? Well, maybe I can put this way. Uh, let me do this. Put it together like that. And the, these extra heels on here will allow me to uh, clip this in place. I'm going to clip them in place and then double check to make sure they're, they're, they're um, in line. So again, I want to make this really, really accurate. That seems to seems to be up. Okay, now it needs to be on this line because if I was to do it this way or this way or this way, any other way than this way, I would get a different angle and, and I wouldn't get the right angle. This is the right angle I need, that angle right there. Okay, so this line has to go from point to point or more specifically, it has to be at 90 degrees to this line, okay? That line has to be right there, okay? So this is the angle of this, and now I have to bisect it. I have to bisect it to get this angle. So how do I do that? Um, I'm gonna get a piece of styrene. I wanna draw on here. And the reason I like drawing on styrene, or just a board, actually the matte side might be better, is I can sit this edge right against here, okay? That's, that provides a very positive sort of location for this. And then I can draw my pencil along here. It's gonna be very short. I wanna maybe extend that. So I'm gonna get another ruler. Let's say this ruler here, this steel ruler. And I'm gonna lay the ruler on here Gently push it up against there, okay? So I can feel it. Don't let it move. And then draw this line. Okay, so it's a nice long line and are arranged with this edge here. So this is this angle right there now, okay? So now I wanna bisect it, cut it in half. I could use a protractor uh, although the method I like to use is um, a geometric method with a compass and a pencil. You need a nice stiff pencil compass uh, that doesn't, isn't going to switch on you. But the problem I have now is I want to be able to put the point right there on the edge and the edge is not going to hold a point. So what I'm going to do is going to take a ruler that I know is sort of parallel. Usually you can assume that the two edges of a ruler are parallel. Okay, and then I, and, and by holding a piece of wood up against the edge of the styrene, uh, that's making a positive connection, and then I can draw along the other side. Okay, so now um, you know the angle that I'm concerned with 
this angle is also here. I also have it here. So I'm going to uh, work with this angle because now I can put the point of my compass right on that junction of those two lines. I'm going to open up my compass, say this far, and draw a nice even circle like that. Okay, I don't, maybe I'll make it darker so it'll show up in the video. Okay, uh, nice sharp pencil. And then um, open up the compass a bit further and put the point there at that where the arc meets this line and then scribe an arc out here. And then with, without changing the setting of the compass, put the point here and then have those two arcs intersect. And then if you take a pencil and a straight edge and you connect those together okay, where the two arcs meet and the original compass center point, that will bisect the angle. Okay, so now this angle and this angle are, you know, exactly half of this angle here. Right? Which should be this angle, the angle of this bevel. So now, this angle, I might mark it here, isosahedron, and mark it. So that's the angle I want. So now I never have to do this again if I keep this piece of uh, styrene. So now I want to transfer this angle to the saw. And I can take, for that, I can take my adjustable bevel, put it, and this is why I like putting on the edge of uh, a piece of wood or styrene. I'm, I'm using styrene because the lines will show better in the video, but normally I'd use a piece of uh, MDF or plywood. And so now I can put this up against here. Make sure the, sometimes this sticks out here. You don't want to have that sticking out. You want to make sure it's, it's completely in the body of this. Um, maybe tighten a little bit and then just make the final adjustment here. So I'm lining this ru the ruler or the straight edge, the metal edge, against that line. Do it on either side, doesn't matter. And this side against here. And then I can lock it, and after I lock it, I check it again to make sure it's right. So that angle, I'm going to just tap it to adjust it, maybe, if I want to fine tune it. I want to be as accurate as possible. So now, this angle, is this angle and this angle, okay? The, the angle of the block of wood I want to use. This one is, well, there it is. Okay, this is this was done kind of roughly, but maybe this is going to be more accurate. There you go, okay? It's exactly that angle. And maybe you can just copy that if you want from the uh, video. You can just hold this up and you can copy it from the video. You make them just trace it. There it is, the angle. But it's better to do it yourself. Now the reason I wanted to have this thing inside here, like I'll show you on this other one, um, if this is sticking out a little bit, okay, uh, when I go to set this on the saw, although this is the angle I've um, recorded, uh, when I set this on the saw to set the saw, I'm going to set it on the saw like this, okay, and I want to assume that this angle and this angle are the same, but if this is sticking out, it's going to throw me off, okay, because this is sticking out. Before you start, make sure there's nothing sticking out. Okay, so now I can sit this on the saw uh, table and probably tip the table um, so the, the blade of the bandsaw, if I'm going to use a bandsaw, uh, will be meeting the table at this angle. And then I can just push my wood through and cut that. Okay, so that's how I uh, determine this angle for an isosahedron. And um, you could do a similar thing with other um, triangles for other forms uh, if you did. Um, four triangles uh, for an octahedron, uh, you can determine the angle for an octahedron, or three triangles for a tetrahedron, you can determine the, the bisecting angle for a tetrahedron. Or if you put, um, you wouldn't have to use a cube, because a cube, obviously, the bisecting angle for a cube is 45 degrees. Um, and for a dodecahedron, uh, you can put three, um, I think I have a sample of that somewhere, three, um, 
where I put it. Sorry. I look for three pentagons together. Here, put three pentagons together like that, and then put the bevel on here, and then bisect that angle for the angle of the bevel. Okay, there you go. Hope that helps.